Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show, where we help you make the wisest and most profitable decisions. And today, we'll help you make the wisest and most profitable decisions about emotions, specifically a gap in emotions between leaders and their followers, between executives and employees. And this is a gap called the empathy gap, and it leads to a lot of poor decisions in motivating employees and engaging with employees. Now, leaders often make poor decisions because of mental blind spots called cognitive biases. And the empathy gap is one of these cognitive biases. These cognitive biases, there are over a hundred of them, they are not conscious. We're not aware that we're making them, otherwise we wouldn't be making them. They cause a lot of errors. These are mental blind spots that result in bad decisions. And with the empathy gap, that results specifically in bad decisions because of us not noticing the emotions involved in decision making. Our emotions and our employees' emotions. So this is crucial for us to realize. We underestimate the importance and impact of emotions. Our own emotions again, and especially our employees' emotions when we are in a leadership position. It can really harm business relationships with our employees and thus employee motivation. So you want to address it by applying two areas, two types of skills. One is emotional intelligence, understanding your own emotions, because if you don't understand your own emotions, you won't realize where your emotions about other people's emotions might be steering you astray. And then social intelligence. That is the skill of understanding and influencing other people's emotions and relationships. So apply emotional intelligence to your own emotions and social intelligence to other people's emotions. So let's talk about the empathy gap and employee performance. This is critical to understand. Leaders really focus on financial incentives as motivators. That is the fundamental basis of what leaders believe motivates employees. But when you look at the reality of extensive research, we see that honestly, financial incentives are not that effective for employees who are actually learning, earning enough money to support a middle-class lifestyle. They kind of fade out pretty quickly. So you're given a financial incentive, it works in the short term, and then it fades out, and then you have to ratchet things up. It's not a good approach, it's not a good technique. Financial incentives are not very effective for long-term motivation. So that is what you need to realize as a leader. Now, what you need to truly motivate employees, at least those who earn enough to be in a middle-class lifestyle in their area, is other incentives. Other types of incentives that have to do with more intrinsic incentives rather than extrinsic incentives. So extrinsic incentives are things that you give people. Intrinsic incentives are things that they feel internally. Now, these intrinsic incentives might have to do with external dynamics in their external context, but these intrinsic incentives are in the end something that they feel internally. Things like recognition, they feel recognized. So are they recognized for their work? Do they feel recognized is the critical question. Do they feel like they belong to a group in the workplace? Do they feel that there's a tribal belonging there? Is there a sense of purpose? Do they feel that there is a sense of purpose in their work? These are the kinds of intrinsic motivators that really drive people in the long term and you don't need to ratchet them up. This is about creating an environment where recognition, tribal belonging, and sense of purpose, that sense of recognition, internal sense of tribal belonging, internal sense of purpose is happening for employees. Now, what's going on here? How are these emotions, intrinsically motivated emotions, connected to performance? Now, we talked about the empathy gap. That's a disconnect between leaders and their staff. So leaders underestimate these emotional drivers, these intrinsic emotional drivers, where there's the sense of recognition, the tribal belonging, purpose, and therefore their decision-making, we don't recognize that employees' decision-making is fundamentally emotional. And their own is as well, to be honest. So we are over 90% emotional, every one of us, no matter how cold and rational and cool we might feel we are. And we're only under 
logical reason based in our decision making. So we need to realize that's what's happening to us. That is just part of who we are. That's our brains. And it's okay. That's fine. But that requires recognition, acceptance for us to make good decisions. This recognition can be especially hard for more technically minded staff. So I've seen a lot of problems with more technically minded staff where leaders think technically minded staff are just cool, rational folks. So people, for example, like analysts in insurance, casualty analysts, actuarial analysts, all those sorts of folks, a lot of insurance professionals. Programmers in tech are typically seen as cool and rational engineers, lawyers, doctors. This is, these are people who are seen as technical staff accountants, of course, technical professionals, and they're seen as cool, calm, and rational. That is not the case. So that is why leaders have a lot of trouble figuring out how to motivate these technical staff. They figure, okay, these are cool, calm, unemotional, rational people. We'll motivate them with financial incentives and rational, logical claims. That is not what actually works. That's not what drives people. That's not what motivates people. You want to motivate technical staff by appealing to fundamental emotional drivers that resonate strongly with technical staff. For example, positive reputation outside of the organization and social status due to peer recognition. Now, there's a good story about this. I was doing a trade, I was doing a consulting engagement for an engineering consulting firm. And how that started is that the engineering consulting firm was trying to motivate its engineers to do more selling, marketing actually. So to do more marketing, to do more conference presentations, to do more blogs, so get the word out about the skills that they provide so that they get more consulting projects. Now, the engineers were not so interested in these topics though the company found. They were really fascinated that they were not really doing this marketing that the company wanted them to do. And so they tried to train them, they tried to provide guidance, they tried to say, okay, how important it is for the company, for engineers to do this sort of stuff. But the engineers really were not doing it. So they brought me in to see what's going on. And I talked to the engineers and I saw that they weren't really emotionally engaged with doing blogs or doing conference presentations. They were emotionally engaged in solving their own technical problems of the actual consulting projects. So that was a problem. And I went to the HR chief, uh, the HR VP who brought me in, so the chief HR officer, and I told him that, hey, you know, your engineers are not really emotionally engaged with doing blogs and doing, and doing conference presentations. And the HR uh, chief looked at me and said, engineers have emotions? <laughs> And you know, other people in the room laughed with a kind of laugh where they was kind of an embarrassed laugh uh, where they were agreeing with the speaker, not like they were making fun of the speaker, not like they were making fun of the chief HR. And I explained that, yes, engineers have emotions, no matter how cool and calm and cold and rational they look, and that those emotions are not really going to uh, enable them to be engaged with marketing efforts unless you motivate them effectively because the financial incentives that they were trying to use and the rational arguments about the benefits of the company weren't cutting it. So I examined what was actually useful to motivate folks and this positive reputation outside of the organization was very valuable and social status. So we tweaked around a number of dynamics to make social status inside the company much more dependent on marketing, on doing blogging, with getting clicks and so on, on doing conference presentations, also on helping these engineers get positive reputation outside of the organization for their marketing contributions. And we saw a quick, quick rise in marketing efforts by engineers. So that's how, what you do to address the empathy gap effectively. Change messaging to address what employees actually desire instead of what the company needs and frame organizational goals from the employee's point of view. So what does the employee get from it? The positive recognition outside the company rather than the company getting projects. 
social status inside the company rather than again the company getting more money so the corporate dot social and that's based on social intelligence social intelligence and emotional intelligence into your messaging and apply these research-based strategies that's how you align internal culture with emo employee emotional drivers so that internal culture which enables the motivation of what you actually want so change that internal culture to align with what actually drives employee desires and that's how you defeat the empathy gap all right everyone i hope you have found this episode of the wise decision maker show helpful and it will hopefully help you address the empathy gap in your own team now if you did like the show please click like and share it with your friends with your colleagues, with your neighbors, with your family members, on social media. That is a great way to help people discover the show and help them get the benefit that you're getting from it. Leave a review uh, for the show on Apple iTunes, on Amazon, for whatever you checked out this show. And please make sure to subscribe to the show. Whether you checked it out as a podcast or a video cast, we have both. So on video, YouTube, subscribe to this channel. On Apple iTunes, subscribe to this podcast. That would be wonderful. All right, everyone. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show. And in the meantime, the wisest and most profitable decisions to you, my friends.